catching you up on the latest stories from around the Sunshine State that you should know heading into this Wednesday, April 6th. I'm Erica Klessy, and this is The Point from WUFT News. Today, many African American cemeteries are abandoned and neglected statewide. Gainesville artist Queen Chico Ngozi has created a project that sheds light on these cemeteries, traveling across Alachua County to visit them. I spoke to WUFT reporter Alexandra Nzinia to learn more about Ngozi's project. Here's Alexandra. It's about Queen Chico Ngozi, who is a scholar and artist in Alachua County in Gainesville. She is finding and going to abandoned or historical African-American cemeteries here in Alachua County, photographing them and then placing them together and painting over them to sort of memorialize the people who are in those cemeteries that may have been forgotten. Could you tell me more about Queen Chiku's project? She received a grant in 2020, I believe, from the state to go ahead and make this picture book she's going to distribute that book all across the country and she's gone to at least 30 of these cemeteries some of them she tells me she had to truck through dirt roads for miles just to get to and the grass was up to her hip Um, so it was definitely definitely a feat to get this done and what about terry bailey Terry Bailey is the founder of the Bailey Learning and Arts Collective here in Gainesville. She is a big character in the Gainesville art community, and she also has relatives that are buried in Pine Grove, which is, according to Nigel Rudolph and Karen Kirkman, um, who are in my, who are also in my story, is part of the cemeteries that are at risk here. And she expressed to me a displeasure with the way that Pine Grove is being maintained and the way that her relatives' graves are being treated there, but just all the graves there as a whole. And I mean, I can't imagine as a relative to go to their grave and see see it being unkept. That's an indescribable feeling. And Nigel Rudolph, he's an archaeologist for the Florida Public Archaeology Network. So he knows a lot about these cemeteries. He's done work on them for a very long time, and he's a historian. He is submitting these cemeteries to the Florida Master Site File to try to get them documented. And when they're documented, they get a level of protection that they wouldn't have otherwise. So businesses can't come in and stomp all over them, or at least they shouldn't be able to. What did the other people you spoke to say? So... In talking with Nigel Rudolph, Karen Kirkman, and you know the historians that I, I talked to for this article, it was described to me that when people were buried in these cemeteries, there are you know there were sometimes churches looking after them, there are sometimes you know family members looking out for them, and when that church goes defunct or when that family member passes away and maybe doesn't doesn't pass on the information of where those cemeteries are, then that's when we get unkempt cemeteries that are not receiving the same level of protection that maybe a cemetery that was at first properly documented would. And Nigel Rudolph also expressed to me that these cemeteries aren't so much forgotten as they are erased because they were at a disadvantage from the start, as far as those going into Jim Crow era, as far as those founded in Jim Crow era. It's not that people forget, although that is the case sometimes when someone passes on and they don't share that information of where the cemetery is, but it's more so that they were at a disadvantage to begin with to keep these cemeteries up to date because of discrimination. What legislation has been put in place to protect cemeteries? Yeah, so... Ron DeSantis signed a bill that made a 10-person task force to find and maintain these cemeteries. And so that has been in the works. And as of January 1st, they actually published a list of recommendations to get these cemeteries protected. And I think a lot of that has to do with documentation to keep businesses away from plowing over them and keeping it a place where ancestors are lying. 
That was WUFT reporter Alexandra Anzinia discussing Queen Chiku Ngozi's project on African American cemeteries and how many African American cemeteries have been lost due to factors like discrimination, abandonment, and neglect. For more on Ngozi's project and others Alexandra spoke to, visit WUFT.org. Now let's take a look at today's top headlines. Minority women-owned businesses in Gainesville are flourishing, and more than 150 attendees were present at the annual Women's Entrepreneurship Summit held virtually by the University of Florida on Friday. Bertrude Albert and Priscilla Zelaya co-founded P4H Global, a business aimed at helping those affected by the 2010 earthquake in Haiti. After a year of collecting supplies, Albert and Zelaya hopped on a plane to Haiti to deliver those supplies. However, the pair were told after arriving to Haiti that they were putting those in the Haitian community at a disadvantage because locals were being sidelined from their usual profit because of Albert and Zelaya's distribution of free supplies. Albert and Zelaya say their experience in Haiti made them restructure their business model for the better. For more on women entrepreneurs in Gainesville, visit WUFT.org and look for author Karina Wilson. Today marks the kickoff of the Bitcoin 2022 conference hosted in Miami, Florida. According to the Associated Press, thousands of cryptocurrency enthusiasts are gathering in Miami as the city builds its reputation as one of the key locations to develop the blockchain technology. Dozens of companies are using the conference, which runs until Friday, as a venue to network, pitch ideas, and share announcements to the industry and beyond. Cryptocurrency exchange FTX bought the naming rights for the NBA arena in downtown Miami last year, replacing American Airlines. Also, the largest crypto company to move to Miami so far, Blockchain.com, will house 200 employees at a location in the Wynwood District, where other tech firms and investors are setting up shop. Subscribe to The Point newsletter, which drops the latest stories into your inbox daily at 8 a.m. I'm Erica Klessy, and you've been listening to The Point from WUFT News. Happy Wednesday!